What's going on guys, Tom Medvedic here, and today I have a very fun tutorial. Actually, um, let me just eat this donut real quick. I haven't had a strawberry in forever. I'm not even gonna lie, that was the second take and I'm not mad about it. <laughs> oh man, that was so good. Um, all right, so a little background story on this knife. This knife was actually called the Desert Warrior and somewhere along the chain of communication at Blade HQ, which is a knife retailer, someone misspelled it and it became the Dessert Warrior. So they thought it'd be funny to dress it up like a donut and they were right, it's amazing. It's probably one of the funnest knives. Oh, there's a little donut on there. Whoops, sorry about that. It's probably one of the most fun knives I have. I collect pocket knives. You can check out my pocket knife Instagram here. But yeah, it's just a ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous knife. And as soon as I was lucky enough to get one, thanks to a friend, I wanted to do this picture, which I haven't even shot yet. So let's get set up. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I did everything and how I lit everything, etc. rigged it. It should be fun. So let's jump into it. So right now I've got the knife set up kind of where I want it. Originally I was coming in from a straight angle, but it looked a little too flat and I want to show more of the side of the knife. So I thought it'd be cool to come in from this little bit of an angle. So let's hop over to the computer and see where we're at with this now. So right now I've got Capture One running. I set up the session earlier and as you can see, I had a few test shots in here and I actually just downloaded this new upgrade today, which changed literally everything. So that's unfortunate, but we will deal with it and it'll be fine. So I like to organize by date and reverse so that the newest images come in up top here and we can see from down here kind of where I started with the flat image and then just that's the before and after. You can see a huge difference there. I really like the, uh, that's the newer one on the left. Sorry, it's backwards. Um, I really like the angle better and got a little closer with it. I needed a little bit of an edge on it. So adding a light on the left side just brings in the top of that knife a little bit there and it looks really nice. So that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so now we're here and now we need to figure out where we're gonna throw these donuts in, put a couple of little props on the surface to make this feel more like a kitchen. So let me show you guys what I have and what the plan is going forward. Okay, so forgive me, I did not have the stabilization turned on before, but now it's on. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna show you guys what I have here are the donuts, obviously. And these are kind of donuts that I didn't think were amazing. And then I put the hero donuts over here. That one fell on the floor, so I have to remember not to eat that one. <laughs> but I already had two, so I think I'm good for today. I think that's gonna be our hero donut because it's the roundest. Um, this one actually looks really nice too. This one has better sprinkles and I figured, oh, I see a big dent here. Well, maybe I can hide that. Yeah, this one just looked really round. It's a little bit low on sprinkles, so I was gonna maybe do a plate for some sprinkles, but let's see what we get. Right now, what I think I'm gonna do is use an uglier donut that I don't wanna use as the hero to be a stand-in. That way, if it falls or something happens, we still have the good one, so we can just get the lighting dialed in, and then when we're ready, we'll fly the hero in. The whole set here, from left to right, I'll do a little pan action there. So I've got my 5DSR with the 24 to 70, and if you didn't see my video about zoom lenses, you can check that out in the link above or below. And that is on the Manfrotto studio stand. It's a seven footer. So this is gonna be our key light here. It's a little bit lower in power than the rim light. The rim light, I wanted it to be a little bit more of a highlight on the edge. This is a Paul Buff Einstein 640 watt second. I wanted to use this. So when we do a little sprinkle bay action, it'll freeze the motion better. So yeah, I got the C-stand with the mini grip arm, a little tiny baby super clamp holding the knife. This isn't the most elegant way to rig something, but it'll work. Luckily, the pocket clip on this knife is a football field long, so there's plenty to grab onto. And then, <laughs> then I have this cool thing that I built just in case, and I'll probably use it for 
rigging the donuts, but it, this is just a pancake apple box with some baby plates. And this is another mini grip kit. I just scored this mini grip kit off eBay, which I'm really happy about because I've been waiting to find one for a while. Moving right along. Oh, by the way, this is a 250 Diffusion over here, which is the absolute best stuff you can buy. This is one of the best things you can have in any studio setup. We're gonna talk about that in another video, but it makes really, really beautiful soft light. And then this is the same diffusion on a smaller frame. And this is our rim light, another Einstein. And this is one stop more power than our key light. And that's what's given us that nice edge on the side of the knife. So now I gotta throw some donuts in there. Let me do that and I'll be right back. I have a ridiculous idea, but I think it's gonna work. So let's take a look at this. So I was gonna use chopsticks to hold up the donuts. This is not gonna work. So we're gonna use a fork attached to this clamp, attached to a magic arm, attached to a grip head, and then attached to this impact vice grip. And I think we're gonna have a lot of luck with that. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I just cut this donut. Let's see if it works. Yes, yes, that's gonna work awesome. All right, let me rig this puppy and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to go back into live view and we're gonna rig this donut in so it goes from like one, two, three. So let's go back to the set. Let's get this puppy set up. So I've gotta tilt this down. Let's see what happens with our very high tech. So that's secure and we wanna move this out a little bit. So now we're looking in live view and want this to go lower still. There we go and fly it in just a little bit. And we want a little bit of dimension, but I also don't want the knife to look teeny and I wanna see a little bit less of the inside of the donut. That feels like pretty good it's a little bit behind the knife, but it's actually, it's on the same plane as the other sli slice of donut. <laughs> this should be all right. So let's do a little test shot. Wow, hilarious. I feel pretty good about this. I think this is looking really good. I always do a four by five crop when I can because that is the tallest that Instagram will allow. And I kind of want to have it centered a little bit there and let's just bring it in a little bit tighter. And I might even bring this donut, this right side in just a hair. Let me do that now. And this might actually all change once we get the hero donut in there because it's gonna be a little bit different shape. I tried to pick a round one just so it looks, you know, the same. I don't want any donut surprises, although I love a donut surprise. All right, this is feeling really good. I'm gonna throw some props in there. Let's flesh this shot out a little bit. So now we're gonna walk over to our little prop area, which has very minimal amount of props. And I've got this coffee mug, but I don't wanna see all this tight because it's probably gonna be distracting. I think I'm gonna go with one of these Ikea jammers. This feels a little too bold. This feels a little too busy. This feels the most minimal. So that'll look really nice. And let's see, let me just toss this down here for now. And let's grab this coffee mug. Gotta have a coffee mug with a donut. So I'm not 100% sure where this is gonna go. I'm gonna look through the back of the screen here. So I'm gonna try and throw this under here so we can just see a little bit of that. And then let's throw this mug back here and then bring this guy all the way back to make some depth. And let's take a shot here and see what we got. And I wanna get that coffee mug out of the background just a little bit. Let me turn this mug a little more. So right now I'm at F11 at ISO 200 and I'm shooting at 125th. So that's where we're at now. So the blade's looking good and the entire handle until about the backside looks crispy, which is nice. The donuts are looking good. This one's just ever so slightly soft in the front, but that's okay. And this one is a little soft in the back. So that's given us a nice little depth there. 
So right now I feel like things are going in the right direction here. Uh, the donut's looking good. I still have to put the hero in. I need to get the edge of the blade a little bit shiny. I feel like the coffee mug's in a good spot. This towel's in a good spot. And I also have a plate that I was thinking of putting in. So let's see what it looks like with that plate. All right, so we got this plate in here. I wonder if it's gonna be too much. Let's see, I have a feeling it might be way too big. It looks gigantic. Let's put it way in the background, see if that works. I don't hate that actually. Let's see if we can get it even further back because it still kind of looks like it's underneath the knife there. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Let's see. Now we have a weird tangent with this line back here though, with the horizon line and the edge of the plate. So let's pull this towel out just a hair, move this plate forward a little bit. I think we're gonna put some sprinkles on this plate and really give it a little life. So I was a little nervous because I thought the plate looked too big at first, but now that I've pushed it back a little bit, I think it looks really nice. We'll get a plate with that, a plate of the plate, sharp and focus. That way I can just kind of bring the edges in a little bit over here. I think it'll look a little bit more believable that it's actually under the knife. I think it's time to get the Hero Donut in. All right, so over here at the Donut Lab, I had one Hero Donut, but it didn't have enough sprinkles on the other side. So what I did was we're Frankensteining this I'm taking the nice half of this donut and then the nice half of another donut. We're gonna put them together. No one will be the wiser. So let me slap those on the forks and move on to the next step. All right, I've got the Hero Donuts in hand, literally. On hand, in hand. <laughs> All right, I'm getting rid of the other ones. Man, it's really tempting to eat these, but already had two. Gotta be a decent human being today. So let's see, so we're gonna get this one on here, skewer that puppy, and this one on here. It's gonna change, I hear sprinkles literally just raining down from every direction. <laughs> let's try one more. All right, I feel like the picture is pretty much done in terms of composition. There's some little things that need to be done. I actually just shot some plates for the edge of the blade. Just a couple of options. I'll probably just go with this one because I like this gradation, how it goes from bright to dark. And this is just the notebook that I had laying around. You don't, you really don't need, I know I have a bunch of gear in here and everyone says the gear doesn't matter. It matters to an extent, but generally speaking, I could do all this with a couple of speed lights and these Einsteins aren't very expensive anyway. So I know there's a lot of equipment here, but you know, I've amassed it over the years. I did used to do it in a garage with a lot less gear and the pictures looked the same. So anyway, but the point is you can use a notebook to fill in some stuff and get in there and get it done. It's actually sometimes the easiest solution is the easiest solution. You don't need to rig a bunch of stuff. You can just hand hold a piece of paper and get a, you know, get a logo or a reflection or whatever. I actually turned up the light on the left side of the frame about a half a stop because I wanted it a little bit brighter and a little bit more open. You can see it's a little dark here. So on the newer exposure, it's just a little bit brighter. And I'm seeing there's really nice light on the side of this donut here, but this side of the donut is a little dark and that's because all this stuff is blocking the light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a plate for that just to make sure that this donut can have its moment because we want it to look real, real good. <laughs> But first things first, I'm gonna start shooting some sprinkles raining down because I think that just needs to happen. So time for the sprinkles. So I just wanted to extend a warning to anyone with epilepsy. You might wanna skip ahead because I'm gonna be shooting very quickly and the light's gonna be flashing a lot. So fair warning there. So I'm basically just gonna do a test and see if we can freeze the sprinkles. And by the way, I should mention, I turned down the lights a little bit and jacked the ISO up because I want to have a faster recycle time with the lights. Otherwise they just won't recycle in time and the frames will be dark. So let's see what we get. Now I have sprinkles everywhere. Um, unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to dump a lot of sprinkles because that doesn't look like much at all. It does look pretty cool though, seeing these little little guys floating. I do like a little motion blur on them so they do look like they're falling. I think this is a good speed for them so let's just dump some sprinkles see what happens. 
All right, so we've pulled, we, it's just me here. So I've pulled the knife out of the shot and now I'm gonna make it rain sprinkles 2008 style. Let's see what we got. It's gonna be a mess. All right, again, epileptic warning. There's gonna be a lot of flashing here. So let's see what we get. All right, and then I'm gonna shoot one for the middle just so we have a plate. And then let the computer catch up real quick. So doing this stuff is pretty tricky. It's a lot of guesswork, unfortunately, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm just trying to sweep across the frame yeah, I can see on the computer it's a little too narrow, so I gotta try and sweep across the frame a little bit better. Just try and get them a little more uniform. Let me try that again. There's literally sprinkles everywhere. Wow. All right. Please work. That was a lot of sprinkles. Did I get it? Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. That looks sick. Let's go to the computer real quick and review that. <laughs> this lighter stuff up here is kind of nice because it's a little more chill, but this is really the insanity that I was hoping for. And I might not use all of them. You can take bits and pieces. So what I like to do in Capture One is I use the red tag for stuff that's just plates. This is a great one. There's a little bit of a uh, waviness to it, which is nice. So what I'll do is I'll go through all these. And again, the exposure might not be perfect because the light didn't recycle fast enough. So we'll just bump that up when the time comes. I'm gonna make a separate video where I edit all this. So yeah, so we got some sprinkles in the background there. So the knife is gonna be somewhere around here. So this will be nice. It'll look very realistic as realistic as exploding sprinkles can look. <laughs> but yeah, and by the way, so now we have a nice shot with the light on the side of the donut now that we've got rid of the knife and all that equipment. Yeah, so I'm just marking these off just so we have them to look through. And it's amazing how many bad shots there are, but that's part of this, uh, that's part of shooting high speed stuff and just throwing stuff, you know? I have lasers and all that, but sometimes just like I said, the simplest solution is just to do it the simplest way instead of rigging all this lasers and all that stuff. But yeah, so back to there. All right, so we got some raining sprinkles. This looks great. I'm gonna do one more on the left side, just so I have something a little bit lower, closer to the top, and maybe just some bouncing off the surface. All right, so I feel like I've got all the pieces I need in terms of the action shots with the sprinkles and getting the donuts shot and all that stuff. So now I'm gonna clean this disaster up. I gotta get rid of these sprinkles and I need to shoot some plates of literally the plate. Got a little oddly satisfying action for you guys here. Just just brushing this sprinkles out of the shot here. Check out this sweet little compact brush here. One of the best parts of working with a prop stylist is not having to clean this mess up myself. Ah, oh, shout out to the prop stylists out there, unsung heroes of the photo world. So now we've shot some background plates for various elements just so we can composite everything later. And anytime you make something float, there's gonna be compositing because you know of rigging and all that. So this is the background plate clean as I named it down here. And I like to name all the files that are plates and additional exposures exactly what they are. So it's very literal because if I look at this a week later, I might think, why did I shoot this? What is this for? So I try to be very specific in the name. So this says background plate clean. So I just know that it's just for the overall background. And then the next one is the plate in focus. And now you start to see this wall come into focus, which you don't really want to see it too in focus because as you can see here on this one, you can start to see all the imperfections and you can tell that it's stickers. So basically these these uh, tile you know, stickers, they're amazing. They work really well, especially like when you see them blurred out a little bit here, they look totally believable. 
And the beautiful thing is, is they're on foam core, so they're really light. You don't have to put it on any like plaster wall. You don't have to use real tiles. It's really cheap from Amazon. I can link it in the description below for you guys. And also that surface is a laminate marble. It's just a sheet, it's a sticker. And that's on foam core too. So I can store these in my flat file, break them out when I need them. Super easy, and again, when they're a little bit out of focus, they look even better. But this marble actually looks really good in focus too. We use it for commercial work all the time in the studio. So now I got the background plate like I mentioned. I got the plate a little bit sharper, so if I wanna composite that, and get some sharper edges on the plate so it looks like a little bit more underneath the knife. That'll be nice. I think that's pretty much it. All right, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If it was a little rough around the edges, I apologize. It was my first time ever shooting a tutorial. Anytime you do something the first time, it's not easy. So I was just trying to get everything done and show as much of the process as possible without showing too much and being boring. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you for watching. If there's anything that you guys want to learn, if there's anything that you want to see in the studio, techniques, gear, whatever, just drop it in the comments below. I would love to make videos that are interesting to you. That'll help me plan for what I'm going to do in the future. So. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed seeing me making it rain sprinkles and I hope you enjoy the final image. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. All right, one more bite.